Welcome figure fans to the 18th Colonel Marbles Miniatures Review vidcast where I look at new, independent, and by that I mean non-games workshop 28-35mm to fantasy, sci-fi and pulp miniature releases for the week ended Sunday the 22nd of October. It's a cracking show this week, if I do say so myself, with a particularly strong top three. I'm pleased to say that the show continues to be sponsored by Rattlehead Games, fine purveyors of many of the independent sci-fi and fantasy miniature ranges you'll see featured here. Right, let's start off with number 10, why not? And it's Pezo Miniatures. This is an exclusive promotional miniature called Dr. Lucky. To get him you need to order Titanic Games version of the board game Kill Dr. Lucky before um, 23rd of October. Ah, oh well. Let's move swiftly on then to number 9 and Brigade Miniatures. Some great pulp figures here, perfect for a Nazi Egyptian archaeology expedition, perhaps to find the Lost Ark for the Führer. Right, it's about time we had some science fiction. So here at 8 we have Alpha Forge. They have a new range of aliens for their Star Mogul game called the Mephalians. First up is this Mephalian Headhunter, which is kind of cool in a rather aliens way. Next is this Totemic Guide. I get the impression that these guys are a bit bent over too much and are looking at the floor, but heck, I suppose they are aliens. No word on pricing yet that I can find. Hassle Free Miniatures crash into the top 10 at number 7 this week. This is Dion, a deceptively simple sculpt of a lady in a trench coat, packing two handguns and a bad attitude. Great stuff from Hassle Free, as always. At number 6 we have Newcomer's Runic. Jacob Nielsen, an award-winning painter, started his own miniature company. On the left we have Anya, a sci-fi chick, costing 750 euros. Very nice, it reminds me of some Dark Age stuff, actually. On the right is Tas Tev, a seer, going for the same price. Next up is Lisa the Futuristic Ninja Girl, again for 750 euros, but she's not doing a lot for me I'm afraid to say, especially given her title. Finally we have Scrag, an Orc Brute, going for 850 euros. This is a really old school feel, and is none the worse for that. Copplestone Castings take the number 5 spot. The latest releases for the High Adventure range are these wonderful Amazon Indian Chiefs, selling for 6 UK pounds for a pack of 4. Mark Copplestone remains my all time favourite sculptor. Just failing to get into the top three this week, at number four we have Heresy. This is a superb rendition of the classic witch archetype by sculptor Paul Muller. It should cost around 450 UK pounds with a cauldron, not shown here in the picture. This episode sponsored in part by the Fiend Foundry, who produce quality resin terrain at an affordable price. German company Obelisk Miniatures are at number three. Sculptor Joseph Ockman has come up with some amazing additions for his fantasy Darkest Africa range. These are the Balukai, or Zombie African Tribesmen. And first up we have the Zombie Camels for them to ride on. Zombie Camels! What will they think of next? And these are some Baluki Zombie Foot Soldiers. Wonderfully different stuff from Mobilis Miniatures. At two we have Pig Iron Productions. They have made available a ten-man heavy infantry booster pack featuring a variety of poses. But more interestingly, and innovatively, they feature 20 separate heads, allowing maximum diversity in the look of a squad. A great idea which I wish more manufacturers would follow. Sponsored in part by Blue Table Painting, your first choice for an excellent miniatures painting service. This week's number one comes from Spanish company GameZone Miniatures. They have a new range of goblins out. These spear-wielding gobbos look tremendous and will retail for £4.50 pounds. Wonderful characterisation in these figures, they do look a lot of fun. This is a really menacing looking hero that will sell for 290 UK pounds. And this uniquely different standard bearer will cost 450 UK pounds. GameZone have always produced fantastic miniatures and these editions are no exception. Well that just about brings us to the end of another Colonel Marbles Miniatures Review vidcast. Thanks for listening and I hope to catch up with you again next week.